Today we're going to be working on this um, Minty Boost from, well the company is Make, but they do Make Magazine and all that on YouTube. It's a um, USB cell phone MP3 charger. Uh, it requires two double A's and soldering. And it's supposed to fit in this. So we're going to work on that. I've got my solder here, my soldering iron, it's warming up so that we'll be prepared when the need arises. I put paper towels down just as kind of a clean surface to have because uh, we've been working on something today. And I didn't feel like getting grease all over my parts, etc. Inside this tin, we have a little card. It says, thank you for choosing this kit designed in New York City by open source hardware pioneer Adafruit Industries in partnership with Make and Makershed. Just follow the instructions at Makershed forward slash Minty Boost to build it. Requires basic soldering and two AA batteries and your gadget's USB cable not included for obvious reasons. Uh, just going through a parts check, we have an LT102 um, chip, I see. And the carriage for it. As well as the USB female connector. It's a six pin, or actually it's a four pin, but it has the grip on it. Anyway, we have that. We have our. Ooh, we have our AA battery holder with leads built in. Uh, it looks pretty solid. And we have. Is it 100 written on it? A resistor of some sort. We also have a 220 microfarad 6.3 volt resistor. A diode. Let's see what does it say. I'm not good with this. Um, N5817 diode. The board itself printed uh, to have the necessary diagram there. Little diode thing, and that's where our uh, actual USB is going to go. Back of it's got all the solderable contacts and Adafruit's little flower. So. We also have what I'm assuming is foam board, because I'm not familiar with all this stuff, but I'm assuming these are foam board squares for insulation and protecting contacts, etc. Um, whatever these are, I think they're capacitors, I can't remember off the top of my head. Itty bitty little resistor. I'll put the actual parts list in there because I'm going to be taking notes so that I can redo this later as well with just an Altoids can. This one is a uh, 220 microfarad just like this one. So we have two of those. Uh, another one of these itty bitty ones. An even smaller resistor of unknown value. And these two resistors, which are different from the other two blue ones. And our tin. So yeah, there's our parts. 
Okay, so I went to the website it showed. On the card it shows to go to makershed.com slash mini boost forward slash mini boost. And that is incorrect. If you go there it just gives you the here you can buy it. So I went to Google Images, found some pictures of just here's a somatic, here's a somatic. Uh, these are both somatics, so you can look that up and that's all well and good. It turns out to actually do the how to because I didn't want a chance burning it up. You go to www.ladyada.net forward slash make forward slash minty boost forward slash solder dot html and that is where you go for that. Alright I've soldered it all up. I clipped the wires uh, from the battery um, so I wouldn't I should have left them really probably but this is what we're left with. We've got the ICN dot this way. We've got the inverter. We've got these two um, capacitors. We've got the two electrolytics. We've got all five resistors. One of which you can't see because it's under the shield, but or not the shield, the uh, carriage for the the socket for the IC, which is in place. The diode, and all we lack as far as on the actual board is the USB connection, which will fit right there. And this is basically it size comparison. I am going to have to cut the hole out right there, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So. Alright, now I've got some batteries and we're going to test to make sure everything is running right, everything is getting the right voltage, etc, etc. Um, I'm going to have to check my reference uh, just to make sure I got everything right. So delivering power 20V Alright, I had to make sure also what setting I need. This should be about, on the thing here it says 5.08 is about what it's getting. We're getting 4.95. Let's see. That could just be resistor differences. Should get a bit higher than five, but we're not. Let's see. It's not a big deal, it's not below three, so we're fine. Right in the second and third. Both be about two volts. And grounding it over here. 1.97. Point nine seven, so that's working. Alrighty, that's our voltage check on the little thing. It says to feel both the batteries and the uh, board, and if either is hot, take out the batteries and check your soldering because there's not supposed to be any overlap uh, over certain parts, and that's how that would happen. So I am using. Use Panasonic Alkaline Plus. I don't know if that has any bearing necessarily on what happens, but you never know. Alright, well, I've soldered in the USB uh, Pipe A connector, yada yada yada. They said to put lots of solder on this, but since it's just kind of a hole, it all ends up going to the other side. But because these two pins right here and right here, are the ones that actually kind of hold it on that you're supposed to keep those on and then the other four you're just supposed to solder like normal so we are going to test and see if it will charge my iPod which I have uploaded a couple videos from I have a wall wart as they call it right here it's a USB and that's what I usually use to charge it so I know it works so we'll go ahead Cable's frayed, I get that, but it, it works still. It doesn't really matter too much. We shall insert mattress. And then, shall plug it in, see if it works. And it does. And 
I keep forgetting that I didn't trim them good enough on the bottom. So that charges my iPod, which means it is pulling the correct voltage because they only charge, I think it, 5 volts and 3.3 maybe. Not sure on that. But they'll charge at two different um, power voltages because of programming and crud like that. Um, so we know it ch charges that. And that was the one I was kind of more worried about than the rest. Uh, put that back over here. Now I'll try my phone. Plug that right in there. I am taking the label off slowly and laboriously. Which I probably should have left it on. But hey, I didn't. That's a mistake I'll make once. And... And it came up. So, it says it's charging. I think. Hold it. Yeah. Yep, it's working. Had to make sure. This cable's a little faulty because of the connection in this. Which, that's from it being a hand me down, plus, it's an old cable anyway. So. So, we know it works. Now, all there is to do is to put it in here. Um, I'm not actually going to do that because that would short it right now. Take the batteries out and I'll do that. It's an important part is to remember that this foam board is for the bottom of this so that it doesn't short out and stuff like that. I'm just going to... Okay, yeah, it is just a foam board insert. So I'm going to go ahead and Kind of press it up against everything. I don't know what this square is for over here. Okay, I get this one's insulation. That's why it's like that. But uh, just a little update. I said as soon as I got the label off, um, I would post again. And coincidentally, I got a new iPod. Uh, between now and then, it's considerably nicer. So, while I was about to do this, I realized, hey, I might want to check the cord uh, with this charger just to make sure. Uh, like I said, here's the charger. I keep the batteries just wrapped up in a uh, paper towel. Seems to work pretty well. And to clarify, yes, I did clean off the tin with some of this wonderful stuff. It does work. I know it looks kind of cheesy, but it's magic. And I managed to do that with all the parts inside, and to my knowledge they haven't been fried, because I've used it a couple times since then. And yeah. So I'll just slip these Panasonics in. And we shall... That uh, and then I'll grab the iPod and this. Also have a uh, 30 pin to 8 pin lightning adapter, uh, but obviously because I just have the lightning cord, I don't need it. And almost immediately we have a charge, so it does in fact work with five devices or generation five devices. Um, Again, I had mentioned that earlier about the um, wiring. I had to make sure it would work with the iDevices because that would be my main reason for having it instead of just the phone.